Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes but loves front-end development. In the next three videos, you will learn how to create a simple currency converter using React.js. In this video, you will learn how to create this simple currency converter. We will load the data, we will load all the currencies from a local JSON, and then we will do the calculation of the currency A into currency B and vice versa. So if we type in New Zealand dollars, it will automatically convert to Australian dollars. If we change the drop down here, we will change this value into the specific currency. We also updating the general exchange rate at the bottom. Okay, so let's dive straight in. We will start this tutorial as all the other ones. So download the starting files, open the 01 start folder of the currency converter project in a VS code. And then in the terminal, run npm install. That will load all our dependencies and then we can run the npm run dev. This will give us in a browser, nicely styled currency converter with a dummy data. As you can see, there's an option a and option B, and then we have two inputs and exchange at the bottom. In the code, we have the same structure as the previous two demos. We have index.js that mounts the app that is inside of JS folder. And if we look at the app.js more closely, you'll see that we have just a simple markup with some bootstrap columns and the most important parts are highlighted with the comment. We have the select input, currency A input, currency B input, and at the bottom, the place where we need to update the currently selected currency. All the UI is created using Twitter Bootstrap. Hopefully you are familiar, hopefully you have a working knowledge of the classes, but all I did is took this HTML from here. So if you see input group and input group add-on, that's exactly what we have in our app, input group. We have a span with input group add-on at the start and at the end, and then in between the input type number. Okay, so this should be very straightforward. And now we can dive into the React code itself. The first thing we'll need to do is to convert this static select HTML input into a dynamic one. And for that, we need some data. If you open the JS folder, there is a data folder with data.js that is a, that exports a constant data that contains currencies array and then individual objects. And at the bottom, we exporting it as data. So we'll use this data to render this input. The first thing we'll need to do in the app.js is to import it. Let's type in import data from data slash data. Now we have the data saved as a constant and we can reuse it. We can inject it into the state of this app. So in the constructor, we'll type in this dot state equals and inside of the object, we'll define the initial state. Currencies will be data dot currencies. Then we'll define currency A, that will be the first currency. So data dot currencies and zero. Then currency B, data currencies one. And then the two values, currency A val, which will be data dot currencies zero dot sell rate. And we'll use the same for currency B val. Okay, so the currency A and currency B value are the sell rates. So this is our initial state of the app. And if we have a look at the data, the Australian dollar has say sell a rate set to one. And that's where it's everything is gonna be calculated from. If you look at it in a browser, you will see that the state now consists of the currencies array of five currencies. And then we have currency A, a currency B, and also the relevant values. Now we'll use these state currencies to render the dropdown for the select currency dropdown. So let's go back to VS code. And 
and here we will need to create the component. Okay, this will be a separate component, so we can create a new file inside of the JS folder, call it selectcurrency.js. And if the app was growing, we would also put it in a subfolder. Okay, so we create a subfolder components, move the select currency inside of it, and now we can import it in the app. Okay, so import select currency from dot slash components slash currency or select currency. And now we can reuse it inside of the app. Just above the original select, create a new opening tag, select currency and a closing tag. And actually this one will be just self-closed. We don't have any children here. So we can just self-close it like this. Now for us to be able to select any currency, we need to pass all the currencies from the state to this component. So we'll define currencies prop and this will be the currencies from this state. So let's pass it like this and don't forget to destructure it from the state inside of the render at the top of it, this dot state, and we will take the currencies from it. Okay, now we will pass it inside of the select currency. And the last thing on this select currency component, we want to create a method that when the user selects a value, we will trigger a method inside of the app. Okay, so on select currency, we'll trigger this on select currency. Okay, this will be custom method that we need to create just between the constructor and the render method on select currency and create a new method. And inside of it, we will just simply console log a simple message. Now it's time to create the select currency component itself. So let's go to the select currency JS and this will be a stateless React component. Okay, so we won't have any state. We don't need any lifecycle methods. So this will be a simple stateless React component. So we can copy and paste the snippet from the React cheat sheet, change the greetings to select currency. Then we'll export it at the bottom, export default select currency. Then at the top of the file, we need to import React and import prop types. And then at the bottom of the file under the constant, we will create the prop types. So select currency dot prop types. The currencies will be prop types array and it will be also required. And on select currency, will be prop types function. Okay, so prop types dot func and it's also required. Now let's replace the paragraph with the select input. So cut it out out of the app.js and paste it inside of the select currency, override the paragraph, just fix the indentation. And now we will need to get the props out of this component. So we can type in curly braces, opening, closing curly braces and inside of it currencies and on select currency. Okay, so this is the same as if we would just keep props in here and destructure them just under. So you are familiar with the destructuring. We could do it two ways, constant currencies and on select currency equals props or we could simply destructure it straight inside of the parentheses. Both ways would make these two props available inside of the render. Now let's save both files, the app.js and select currency, go to the browser and inspect the select box. In the React DevTools, we should see select currency component that has two props, currencies and on select. So we're passing the data the right way and all it's remaining is to map through it. So map through the currencies and render the options. Just above the options inside of the select, we'll create a new JavaScript expression. 
we'll map through the currencies, we'll get individual currency and for each of them we will return the option so we can copy and paste it from down below instead of the option A we'll get the currency dot name we'll set the value to be currency dot code that is the AUD USD that's the unique code or unique identifier so we can also use it as a key and again to even make it even more streamlined code we can destructure it above okay so use the constant above target the currency and get the code and name from it and then just replace the values get rid of the currency and dot this will make the code even more compact now let's create the on change handler on the select tag this will pass in the event and trigger the on select currency and pass in the e target value so pass in the usd aud as a value to this function we also need to make sure that the function accepts the code so let's go up to the app.js and don't forget to in the on select currency include the code that's what we want to pass in and we will render it or we will console log it when we clicking or when we selecting the value okay this should be it if we save both files and look at it in a browser we should see inside of the console when the user changes the currency we should see a different message nice we've got it rendering fine in the console and we'll continue in the next video this is it for this video don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to the channel for more videos like this until next time happy coding